This is Colin O'Keefe here for LXBN TV. Could public Facebook posts be protected under attorney-client privilege? Believe it or not, that's the issue recently raised before a judge in Nebraska. Joining me now to explain the backstory and the potential uh, for such posts to be protected is attorney Fiona Ong. She's with Shaw Rosenthal, an author on the firm's blog, The Labor and Employment Report. Uh, Fiona, first, can you walk us through the case that, that you recently brought to light on your blog? It's, it's pretty ridiculous, but can you walk us through a bit of the backstory here? Absolutely. And it is a very funny case, which is the reason it caught my attention. Um, this case involved a plaintiff, Susan Kaiser, who was terminated from her employment with Gallup, Inc. And following her termination, she sued the company, um, alleging that she'd been discriminated against on the basis of her disability. Now, during the case proceeding, the plaintiff provided some documents that revealed that she had discussed her job and her termination with a uh, president who was an attorney. And then the plaintiff produced some documentation in which it was revealed that she had talked about her communications with her cousin to a coworker. Um, they used either IM or text messages, and it happened just before her termination. And then she talked about what she had discussed with her cousin and what her cousin had told her to do and say in preparation for the meeting. And then following her termination, she filed a claim for unemployment benefits. And um, the court had, or the hearing examiner, had awarded her benefits. So she went on her Facebook page and posted that she had won her claim. And um, not only that, uh, she shared that with all 347 of her Facebook friends, um, including her cousin, who then responded with a message of support. And then her other Facebook friends wanted to know what was going on. So she explained she'd been terminated, and she said she was going to let her cousin explain the law. Um, and then there were some other Facebook postings back and forth in which she talked about what her cousin thought and said about her termination. So the employer wanted to obtain copies of any communications that the employee had had with her cousin about the particular issue. And the uh, um, plaintiff refused to produce them on the grounds that they were protected by the attorney-client privilege. So as I said in my blog, the, in order to be protected by the attorney-client privilege, there are four things that need to happen. The communication has to happen in confidence, and it has to be in connection with the provision of legal services. It has to happen to an attorney, and it also has to happen in the context of an attorney-client relationship. In this particular case, the employer argued, and the court agreed, that it was really unclear whether or not the attorney-client privilege should apply to these communications. Um, although the cousin is an attorney, uh, the issue here is that these communications were not really clear as to whether or not they were occurring in the context of an attorney-client relationship, or whether the cousin was really just acting as a supportive family member. And then the other piece of it was, of course, the confidence um, problem, because if you're sharing this information with 347 of your nearest and dearest friends, that's not really confidential. So in that particular case, the court said, you know, the attorney-client privilege stuff. Of course, and it's pretty obvious and you leave it out, laid it out a bit there, but, but what's the lesson here? Is there a situation maybe where, where Facebook posts or Facebook messages could possibly be protected under attorney-client privilege? Yeah, so, you know, I think what is interesting about this particular case is that the type and extent of information that people feel free to share on social media platforms like Facebook, but somehow still think are private. I think the boundaries of what people consider to be private is somehow understood very differently today with the new technology. And in the past, conversations with friends usually took place one-on-one -on -one or in small groups when you were physically together. But now you can share a communication with a large group of people. And I don't know that people really understand the implications of doing that. Now, the attorney-client privilege is held to a very high standard. And um, that has to change, even in this new the whole media world. And not everything that somebody says to an attorney is going to be protected by the privilege. And even if the privilege does apply, it can be waived, which is exactly what may have happened in this particular case, if you're going to share the substance of your communication with your attorney with 347 of your friends. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Though the the technology is always changing, the the rules really don't. People have to realize that uh, even though the technology is new, the same principles still apply. Uh, once again, that was Attorney Fiona Ong of Shaw Rosenthal for more of her insight on this story and others in the labor and employment space. Be sure to visit laboremploymentreport.com. Thank you for joining me today, Fiona. Thank you so much, Charlie.